Hello and welcome my Libra Collective Sun, Moon, Rising and Venus signs. Welcome to your What Do I Need read for this new moon in Scorpio to full moon next in uh, Gemini, November 2020. I'm your reader, Mark Angelo Lyons, Mal for short. Professional witch, professional intuitive president of Drawing the Circle Productions, uh, Venus in uh, Libra sign. Uh, the Archangel of Lions, Mark Angelo Lyons, but you can call me Mal. Hi. <laughs> hello, my subscribers, my friends. Hello, hello, hello. Thank you so very much for tuning in, showing up your subscription number, my subscription number, as I said, should say, because of your steadily rising, uh, hearing your comments, that notification bell. It's all of this stuff is becoming so more and more important as a YouTuber, as it's been for a while, but with algorithms changing, you know, whispers on the web you hear, really every last little bit of interaction uh, that you're having with me is very important. So I really appreciate it. Thank you for your help and your balance on, uh, and the balance of, you know, exchange here. Me giving you the best I got, you doing all the youtube -y things, really helping me get there, shooting for that 30,000 subscriber thing so we can do the membership stuff here so I can have the join button and all of the stuff that comes along with that. It's a long way there. But every day is a winding road, don't you find, uh, my Libras? So let's get down to business. If you're new to my channel, please do consider liking, subscribing, and helping me on uh, my journey towards my goal to give you very much more of the very best and the very blessed that I got. I need a baker flavor in there. So let's talk about this reading. It is a six card draw, pulling one card from six different decks, two tarot decks, two oracles, and two healing systems. Uh, to get you clarity, guidance, and grace about this particular time frame, right? We're looking at the new moon in Scorpio, Sunday, November 15th, uh, 12.07 a.m. Now that's seven minutes after midnight Eastern. We are doing something here, I believe, 9 p.m. Eastern the Saturday before. So that would be on the 14th here on the channel if you would like to drop in for a little Scorpio new moon magic. But then we are looking at the waxing moon. That's what this reading is about. What do you need from this new moon in Scorpio to full moon next <clears throat> in Gemini, November 30th. And it is an eclipse. And that is 4.30 a.m. Uh, um, Eastern. And we'll be doing something later on that evening to catch the waxing side of the moon. So that's what this reading is for, right? Asking my collective pantheons what it is that you need on different levels of consciousness uh, for that waxing moon period to grow, to evolve, to step forward, to take action, whatever that is. Cool, cool. Uh, your job is pretty simple. Stay in the present moment. Focus on your breath, air sign that you are, right? Come into that balance. Take what resonates, leave what doesn't. But every time you watch a reading, and I'm doing this for myself too, it's like the, the, the challenge really is to what is going on in my energy field in reaction or response to what I'm seeing on the screen, right? And that's how you filter out what is yours and what is not in general read. I'm learning, right? It's like I read people face to face for decades, right? So, you know, my guides and my masters and all of that, they're showing me how this works little by little. It's a lot of fun for me. Cool. So uh, I will do the same, stay in the present moment to get you through the clarity, guidance, and grace that I can. It's a general reading, as I said. Check your other signs, right? Because your sun signs are just going to get different info and maybe about a different or the same situation, right? For a waxing moon. <clears throat> All the decks that I read are in the description box at the bottom. I think that's enough exposition. Shall we take a nice deep breath? I forgot something, they'll remind me. <laughs> and here we go. Lovely. Hello, my angels and archangels of the element of air and the sign of Libra, my uh, Raphaelites, please. Can I have one card in clarity for the Libra Collective? Sun, moon, rising, Venus signs, perhaps me in there with that Venus and Libra placement that I got. Uh, what is it that we most need to know? What is the angel we most need to call upon? The healing with the angel oracle, right? So what is the healing angel that we most need to work with, call upon? It's like hovering over us, but waiting for us to ask. For this new moon in Scorpio to full moon next in Gemini, and we've got the angel of abundance. Rock on. Like, as soon as I as I really tune to the angels, they I, like they all have these smiles on their faces. So abundance, look, the word means extra, right? Or a lot, right? That the universe will always give you everything that you need in every given moment uh, in exchange for you shining at your, your highest light, right? Living your most authentic truth. And that's not easy, right? That's a journey every day. It is a winding road, but we get a little bit closer. 
<laughs> you know, the crow is one of my spirit animals, <laughs> the Cheryl crow. I love her. I love to meet her. Uh, I love to have a cup of, you know, what, Kambuka coffee or whatever, you know, whatever. Uh, but, but that very much, that sense, the angel of wealth. What would the angel of abundance wealth in all of its forms, such as financial, <clears throat> what, what would it do, right? I would think for a waxing moon, it would help you, like, experience and manifest what's written for you to manifest during this time, right? To have everything that you need and perhaps not realizing what you have. This is coming for a lot of you in terms of the endurance that you have garnered over the past year, you now have an abundance of strength that, and really 2020 who does well, I mean, maybe some people don't, but call, you need to call, <laughs> call your angel of abundance, right? Because yes, I could be abundance of emotion, abundance of thought, all of that. And that's why we're going to do five other cards, right? So let's see. Let's go inside. Daughters of the Moon Tarot. Uh, Fiona Morgan. Brilliant deck. I've been reading this longer than any other tarot deck. I got it when I was 19 years old. A dear friend of mine, Ellen, read me on this deck at a party. It was black and white back then. The color version has been created since. And I ran out and got this deck. So take a nice deep breath, my leaves. <sighs> Breathe. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, the divine feminine, uh, the half of the universal energy, the divine yen, the goddesses, and one in particular has caught my attention all day long today. My matron for the year, Aphrodite, sweet and flighty, runs around that seat through nighty. Please, uh, my goddess is one card in clarity and all in perfect love, perfect trust, and perfect respect for this Libra collective sun moon. Rising Venus sign from this new moon in Scorpio to full moon next in Gemini. What is it that we need to be aware of inside of ourselves? Yeah, I can relate to that, you know, abundance, calling on the angel of abundance. You know, do that every day. Things are going to move along a little bit differently. But what do we need to be aware of inside of ourselves? This new moon to full moon next, well, five of pentacles, earthquake. Now, this is not an external earthquake you know, uh, being left out in the cold. It's not something that's happening, actionable outside of you. This is something that's going on inside of you. And I'm going to tell you, even if you are feeling left out in the cold, blah, you know, I hate to say blah, 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 but you hear it on, it seems like you're reading, right, that you watch. Uh, this is about being shook up. Now, it, it may certainly be as the result of an external thing, but it might be something that there is just a foundational change happening within you, right? Element of uh, earth, and water, we think of them as external things, right? Uh, symbolically speaking, right? The divine feminine. And yet, you know, our bodies, our physical bodies are made of 60% water, give or take, right? So th there's something in here about like, it, it's, I don't know if it's a physiological shift. I don't think it's a health issue right off the bat, particularly with this angel of, um, of abundance. It's like, there could be... All right, they're redirecting me. Earthquakes are very short in terms of duration, time. Like, like a 10 second, 15 second earthquake's a big deal depending on where it is on the Richter scale, right? It's not just a tremor. This is something that will pass. I call this the uh, my tower card of the minor arcana, right? It's like you get shook up, but you get shook up inside. And how much change is made in those 10 to 15 seconds? Remember, 15 seconds is a long earthquake. Count it out in your head and while well, everything in your house is shaking, right? And things are crashing. And so internally, there could be a shock to your system, but it's not tower card. <clears throat> Although, let's see what's going on on the outer. What do you need to know about uh, the mythic tarot, the gods, right? We've got the divine feminine on the table, point of view, what you need to address, look at, deal with. Let's see what's going on in the yang in the outer. Breathe. <laughs> yeah, that's why I, I don't get a bad feeling about this earthquake for some reason. Not with that angel of abundance. It feels like for a waxing moon, right? You got to keep it in that context that there's a change going on, but it might be like a seed breaking through the ground. You know what I mean? Like a change, something so foundational inside of you for something new really to come in. My gods, please, my gods of Libra and the sign of air, Eros in particular, the divine masculine, other half of the universe, please, one card in clarity. He's trying to cover all the bases there. Please, one card in clarity, my beloved. Uh, in this Libra collective, sun, moon, rising, Venus sign. 
what do we need this new moon in Scorpio to full moon next in Gemini, November 2020? Because we got the angel of abundance that we need to call on. And it's a healing angel, so there might be some issues in play there, particularly with the five of pentacles. Maybe there has been a loss. What's going on on the outer here for us? And the death card. Yeah, Hades. Uh, uh, who I was speaking to earlier this morning. Don't be afraid of him. He's a great guy. I mean, he's the eldest of the, of the Olympian gods. People forget that. He's the wisest. He hears all the stories. And he always, he always wins in the end. Right? I'm not afraid of him. He's a sweetheart. He looks like Michael Hutchins with long, straight black hair. So beautiful. Anyway, so, you know, uh, but I'm a mystic. <laughs> I'm a mystic and a witch cope, right? <laughs> Pisces moon, you got your ass uh, in the eighth house. Uh, so this is really a transformation that's going on on the outside, and you are shook. Now, with abundance, I'm going to say this could be an equity. Why would the angel of abundance be assigned to this, right? It's a good question to ask, and I remember that. It's like somehow... There's a healing of abundance in all of this. And, and for a general read, I could leave it right there. But because of the state of the world right now, right? If we really even go so far as to extend, it's not to just your external personal life in terms of relationships, money, lower three chakras. But seeing it on a global, yeah, <clears throat> you're shook up. Things are not the same. And yet that angel of abundance, we're just going to keep going, right? More pieces of the puzzle on the table help you see the larger picture. <clears throat> These ended masters. Speaking through two decks, by the way, that we got the Healing of the Angels Oracle, that's the first Oracle. Those are our two tarot. Now, this is the first of two healing systems, because I don't really consider them divinatory in nature, though that is how I use them. Chuck's Pizano Love Pack, very powerful thing. If you can grab a deck, it's probably out of print. Uh, uh, also, you have the Enlightenment Pack that came before that. With this, He sort of like doubled the deck when he did uh, the Love Pack. Four Suits, The Problem, which is over on the shelf, we ain't dealing with that. We'll bring those back for the Waning Moon Raids. Uh, uh, but then we have uh, uh, luck, healing, and grace. So let's ask them what you need to be aware of. You'll hear it in the prayer. Breathe. Breathe. <laughs> this feels good, though. Like, that's what I mean. It's like tuning to this. This doesn't feel horrible. Please, my uh, my ascended masters, one card, there you are, my ascended masters, one card in clarity for the Libra Collective, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, Sun, for this new moon in Scorpio, to full moon next in Gemini. What do we need? What do we need to be aware of? A piece of luck, which feels like this could be something lucky here that we just don't see. What is a piece of luck we need to be aware of? That can play itself out a lot of different ways. What is the piece of healing available to us, particularly without healing with the angel of abundance there, that we need to embrace and implement uh, or what is the piece of grace that is permeating this entire situation that we need to be aware of and allow? Well, here we go. Romance. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. You know, I have to put that in the title. It's the only way people will watch it, right? <laughs> you know, if it's like forgiving the pet to like, eh, the fungal, right? They're like, nah, I want to know when's my stuff getting touched. Well, I'm going to say to you that there is something lucky here. And when you put the angel of abundance together, this is all one thing. This isn't like different aspects of your life. This is one through line. But you should, and why wouldn't you be? If particularly, you know, what if the angel of abundance is helping you? Oh, this is an interesting image they're giving me. And I don't really understand. I mean, I understand basic electronics, but you know, like, like rewiring you little by little by little, right? You're building up your strength to be able to endure this, but this is necessary, right? It's a necessary stage of the process. The shock of it. Like I said, it feels like a tower card, but something like, I wonder if you it might be just an overall sense of anxiety and uncertainty. Uh, but I just learned this from Matt Kahn, though. Um, I don't need to know what's going to happen to know that I'm supported. And I think that's true because the major arcana card that you got here is the death card. It is a transformation, but it's probably a rising from ashes, though you may be dealing with some of the residual of going to. Do you know what I mean? Like the, the, the physical stress of of this right going on inside of you this happens very quick but earthquake it builds for a long time but then it finally booms 
fucking bells and bumps. Oh, alliteration. Oy. Okay, uh, let's keep going, though, because with that romance, it it's a party turner. <laughs> the party hath been turned. Turneth. So let's go to our second oracle, the Whispers of Love Oracle, and there's enough romance cards and stuff in this deck for sure. But uh, this is the vehicle through which the higher selves of all involved. Oh my God, I, are you guys kidding me? Is this who I think it is? I hey, let's go. Uh, oh, I just I just got a text message from somebody, not the person that I they showed me, but still, nonetheless, it's interesting. Breathe. Yeah, now I'm personally invested. Please, <laughs> the higher selves of all involved. I love you. So much, and you're such a calm group, really. The higher selves of all involved. One card in clarity and perfect love and perfect trust. And, uh, one card in clarity for the Libra Collective Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus signs. Uh, this new moon in Scorpio to full moon next in Gemini. What is the piece of inspiration, information, or insight that we need to know, that we need to look at, that we need to integrate into all of this, this uh, new moon to full moon next? Love endures. Love does not give up or lose faith. Love is hopeful and withstands every situation. Is somebody coming back? Is somebody coming, damn, I mean, how many readings on YouTube are somebody's coming back and you're either like, oh, no, <laughs> fuck my chakras with a rake, mom, or, you know, just like, oh, I'm away, you know, and everywhere in between, right? It's just, oy. but that's what this feels like. Love endures that there's a soul contract in play, particularly with the death card and the transformation. Now, <clears throat> again, are you going through this transformation? With that death card in the yang, maybe, but that does feel more like an external transformation. And again, you can make that global. You just absolutely make that global. Just the atmosphere alone, right? Death in the air, but look at it symbolically as well, right? Let's move on from that. But with this love endures. Now, I, I take issue with love does not give up or lose faith. True. The soul, the truth of who we are, the divinity, we are, of course, never does. But we are on a journey with this. So it's okay to be shook. <clears throat> if there's a major a major arcana transformation in the air going to rising from ashes involving romance but that's a luck card that's saying that that somehow that there is a part of this that we may not be aware of which could be somebody coming back or going through some transformation and the love somehow endures wherever you've had in other words what why i say <clears throat> somebody possibly coming back is because you've already had to endure something or maybe this could be romance in general, too. That's right. Thank you. They're like, well, for some of them, right? And maybe for a majority of, of uh, <clears throat> the percentage of the readers of this, it's going to be more in a sense like their love life is going through a real transformation. Even if there's no one specific here, specifically indicated. And of course, there is going to be somebody specifically indicated sooner or later with that angel of abundance. So last uh, card, healing system, the healing mantra deck by Matt Kahn. I love this thing. <laughs> love it. Of him, I love his work. Check him out. Just check him out. Take a nice deep breath. Because we're asking the Ascended Masters who <laughs> the romance card of the suit of luck with abundance, abundance and romance. Do you, you think I should make that the title? Well, it's too late now. By the time you're watching it, here we go. My Ascended Masters, please, one card in clarity for the Libra Collective, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, Sign, this new moon in Scorpio, to full moon next in Gemini. What is the perfect healing mantra for us, considering the Angel of Abundance is the one we need to work with? We need to be aware of, <clears throat> address a deal with this five of pentacles inside of us that does feel like, uh, 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 like, I don't know if it's struck by lightning or if it's, anxiety or if it's uncertainty but definitely there are changes of foot oh and that could be an intuitive thing as well you might be empath and we might be empathing picking up on okay right hold on a second this uh, something's happening something's happening something's happening because of not just what's going on in the world but in a romantic situation so you need to be aware <clears throat> you need to be aware this is going on that this is affecting your romantic energy life partnerships what have you and love enduring. So what is the perfect healing mantra for that, please, my ascended masters, this new moon in uh, Scorpio to in Gemini for the Libra Collective, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, I do boy, here we go. Befriending pain. When discomfort becomes a friend, my most limiting beliefs are healed. And you know what? I just 
listened to something yesterday. Uh, oh, it was one of one of the readers. Oh my God, I can't remember who it is. There's so many. And she was saying that she has a background. Oh yeah, blonde hair, hair up. She's really cool. Oh, I can't remember names, I'm sorry. I'll, I'll post it later. Uh, and she was saying that that uh, chemistry, she struggled studying chemistry, right? And, but, you know, she got her, her degree, what she wanted to do, and it changed her life uh, for the better. And she learned a lot about pain, right? That the pain is to be befriended. It's not the way she said it, but it reminded me of this mantra, actually, um, that it's the body communicating, right? Through chemicals and signals through your body saying, hey, pay attention to this, pay attention to this. And you look at how much we do to repress pain, right? Not necessarily deal with it. So, uh, you know, I, I just feel like, obviously, this is a romantic pain so when discomfort becomes a friend my most limiting beliefs are are healed and that and, and we are in the waning part of the year or in salentide right from salen slash halloween to yule we're in the dark part of the sun right just like dark moon before new moon and dark sun before the new sun at winter solstice but there i just i can't get away this angel of abundance i don't have a horrible feeling about this i just don't maybe you know, let me read it from the book. <clears throat> Let me read it from the, the book of the bookiness, the bookiness of the book, um, because I get this. And I mean, as a Libra, I'm, I'm Mercury conjunct Venus in Libra, third house, God help me, right? You know, I get this, bringing this into balance, right? When discomfort becomes a friend, my most limiting beliefs are healed. Now, they just said to me, stick a pin in that for a second, uh, uh, beliefs, mental, element of air, Libra, left brain, right brain, right? You know, all of that jazz. When you befriend pain, you are allowing limitations to be released from the cells of your body, period. I mean, as a healer, that's enough for me, but I'm going to keep going for you. <laughs> because pain is often the result of rapid transformation. Write that one down, right? Pain is often the result of rapid transformation. It is essential to make friends with it in recognition of how quickly you are evolving. It might be uncomfortable and sometimes nearly unbearable much, uh, uh, but your most profound shifts in consciousness often occur once pain is befriended as an ally of your evolution. I mean, that's a very long sentence there, but there's a lot to unpack there, right? I mean, as a teacher, I kind of can't not. Uh, uh, it is essential to make friends with pain in recognition of how quickly you are evolving, right? So if you've been working your path and pain happens, right? And what does the spiritual ego do? It says, well, you must be doing something wrong. Oh, it must have done this from a past life. Oh, man, I pissed on the wrong tree as a dryad in a past life. And now, I don't know, my life feels wooden. Whatever, you know what I mean? It's like, that's not true. That's not true. I didn't read the last little bit of it. I'm, I'm, in, I'm impassioned on our behalf. Uh, this mantra is ideal for healing the body, mind, and soul on an energetic level. Boom. Boom. I mean, that's what I feel like. This doesn't feel horrible to me for some reason, this, right? It might be the voltage of an external thing, like, and which, uh, which came first, the chicken or the egg, right? It feels like this is the internal that's manifesting this external. I mean, I'm a Virgo, right? All that Libra I got going on there, they're conjunct. I have a Yod. <laughs> Lovely, touched by God. It's not like it's written in the booklet. Uh, we're bringing this into balance. This is definitely a thing, but befriending pain, it's, it's gonna transform you, just in play. So let me put it together in the prayer. Ready, breathe. Hmm. May the Libra Collective, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus signs be blessed with all that they need. This new moon in Scorpio to full moon next in Libra, that they may befriend pain, learning that when discomfort becomes a friend, our most limiting beliefs are healed as the love we have for ourselves and in this situation endures because love does not give up or lose faith love is hopeful and may we experience it withstanding every situation about this romantic piece of luck that it brings some relief some release some different chemistry to the situations of our lives while the world and our lives and the external goes to and rises from ashes more rising and we experience that change within ourselves viscerally to our core, our foundations shook that the angel of abundance can come in. 
and whatever pain that is being befriended, whatever transformation that is in place, that it is alchemized from lead to gold, from pain to peace, from suffering to joy, from fear to love, for the well-being of all, in quantum unity, so mode it be, and so it is. They took over the end of that prayer, didn't they? Thank you so much for watching my Libra Collective Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus signs. If you like the video, just hit like. No one will know. It'll be our dirty little secret. If you like me, though, if you like how I read and how I work, because I do work, <laughs> which work, uh, please do subscribe. Help me get to 30K subscribers so that I can do so much more cool stuff with this platform. I'm really digging it. And I love YouTube. I know people bitch about it or whatever. They can change as many algorithms as they want. I'm having a good time. And I hope you are, too. And I hope you do, too. May you be blessed with all that you need, this new moon in Scorpio to full moon next in, Gem uh, in Gemini, November 2020, my beloved Libra's hail. Farewell. Farewell. You know, it's like farewell. It's like, no, farewell. Go take the journey. Farewell. And blessed, blessed day.